Hey, welcome to my presentation, everyone. I'm Pirka Frosti. I'm the uh, CEO of Digital Living International, as well as the uh, concept owner for the platform of trust, which is something I will use as a case today to show what we can actually do with APIs and data, and how we have solved some real-world problems with that, and how also you can get involved in this uh, industry-wide phenomenon that we are building. What we do is basically we create data marketplaces for various industries, but they are built on my data perspective. So you own the data, you own the identities, and the data can be personalized to your needs. In a similar way, we can use different industries and enable for them to create different marketplaces that are actually interoperable and thus help you to build the actual end user solutions and need and purpose for the data to be used. And uh, real-time economy is one of the big things happening in Finland as well. How can we automate taxation, financing, any transactions you would have, basically, make the euros and dollars flow with any other process information you would have in construction, healthcare, or, for example, in energy sector. And combining these, I, I would like to show you why are we doing this? Why is Platform of Trust as an industry basically started uh, on this road? Uh, why real estate in this context of data and APIs actually matter? And also, how in practice are we now building this? So let's look a bit under the hood and also see how we are connecting APIs, making them interoperable, harmonizing the data, as well as productizing it for the benefit of the real-world users and tenants, owners of the buildings. So uh, the real estate sector is just a support function for any other industry and a walk of life, basically. All of our activities mainly happen inside buildings. We drive on the roads, we live within the infrastructure, so it's not something that we can detach from any real uh, phenomenon happening in the real economy. And why we are doing this with data is that the world is, of course, changing rapidly. The most of all, how we consume resources, how we provide energy, how we provide food, and the different means to run our societies is in turmoil at the moment. No surprise for you guys. The same is happening with automation. The way we used to manually produce goods and services has completely been disrupted and is affecting the whole society and economies today. The same happens thanks to us as consumers. We consume products both from US shops, uh, brokered in France and manufactured in Indonesia, and basically we do it every day without any respect to any economic regions or boundaries. So we are the ones actually disrupting the whole economy and the ways we tax and where the value is being created in the world. And that's been leading also to the world running on debt as well. If you consider buildings, they are used as collateral for most of the financial transactions in the world. The assets, values, are completely disconnected from the real-world values of these buildings. We have learned nothing. We have created 40% more debt since the credit crunch, uh, and the world just continues to work like this. And if you just introduce the, the basically the polarization of values and the politics, especially between US and China, you have a pretty interesting setup, which creates, of course, a lot of costs, but of course a lot of opportunities as well. And this is nothing new. This is how the world has been turning for millenniums. But the main driver is the data, as you all know, and especially the networking effect behind it all. And this is the key thing for especially industries which are really slow moving, like the real estate and construction. The cycles are 25 years instead of uh, uh, three months quartals. And the thing is that how to survive in this kind of environment. The thing with all these networks is that 
uh, if three people create three connections, ten people create 45, 14 people alone creates uh, 91 permutations between each other. And if you know the Metcalfe's law, law, it means that every connection also creates uh, uh, exponential value to the network. But the only problem is, is that if you introduce 7 billion people with 100 billion IoT devices alone, and think about those connections, obviously no man can survive in handling that. So that's the key thing. Only machines can actually make the economy work, and only the transactions made by machines can actually deliver the answers for the problems and challenges that we have. But the main problem is that, uh, especially in these industries like healthcare, hospitality, energy, construction, education, they're the least digitalized. They create the most impact, yet they basically run on paper. Try selling your apartment in Finland, for example. You know how it goes. You buy back your own data for 300 euros, and basically it's on, uh, on the form created in the 70s, and the bank runs on that data. So the data lacks structure. It, the machines can't actually understand what it is, and it results also that any data you have, you cannot productize it. You cannot slap a price sticker on it and say that I want to sell it, basically. And without the automation of trust, we always need to visit somewhere, produce our passports, uh, contracts, or whatever it is, and any automated process hinder is hindered by this fact that the trust is created on paper, basically, nowadays. And without data, without trust, uh, the algorithms are useless, basically. If there's no context, you cannot do any meaningful processes or transactions using the data you have in the APIs. So, no surprise, there's a massive need for data, but it, it's actually arriving from those big challenges, the big drivers to actually optimize the usage, for example, of resources in the build-up environment. So, how can you break the silos and make the data available? The discovery of it is the big thing. So why the real estate industry then? It's the biggest impact we can find. Definitely. No question about it. It produces the most CO2, consumes the most energy and other natural resources. Just the making concrete in the world consumes most of the fresh water used in, by the societies. And of course, the spend globally on buildings and the build-up environment is massive. Which means that any fraction of a change you can create, creates a massive impact overall. Not just in the construction and real estate, but in all different industries relying on these buildings and having the assets tied to these bricks and mortar and, and glass here. At the same time, is definitely one of the worst performing industries. And as a result of uh, also spending almost the less uh, amount of money compared to other industries on R&D, it is the least digitalized. So combine these, you should have a pretty interesting opportunity to start doing something with data. There's basically no competition. If you want to start doing something big, go there now and actually start making a change in different industries. And uh, there's a lot of money to be shared and also a lot of disruption potential that we can actually use if we just can get to the data and make it accessible so we can actually build meaningful services. And that's what we are doing with Platform of Trust. And I'll show you briefly what kind of a platform we are talking about, how it works, how the data providers can actually connect their data, how can we make it available, and how do we create the trust also, as the name promises. I've been doing this for a couple of decades already, and this is definitely one of these industries where you, in Finland, for example, you needed to drink a lot of vodka and sauna yourself almost to death with uh, the president of Finland 
uh, and basically all the heads of the banks and construction companies decided what we're going to build, how we're going to plan it, and how we're going to then capitalize them as well. So that's not going to change that soon, but the, what has changed a great deal is the whole mental atmosphere in, within this industry. These are the biggest real estate owners. They are the ones actually, uh, uh, the ones that need to m finally create the real end value for us as tenants, paying for all of the costs of the real estate basically with rents or just owning your own apartment means that somebody needs to build it, build it so you can actually uh, get the tenants to pay either the rent or buy it from the construction company's hands. And finally, they have decided that, okay, we want to have a big change in this. It's not just about building buildings, it's actually creating living environments, main, meaningful shopping centers, hospitals, daycare centers, homes, that with the help of data, we can actually serve the tenants and the ones using the buildings, not just the maintenance guy and the manager as previously. And they have actually created the big change here, not the technology. Stenatti being the largest public sector real estate owner in Finland, Koyamo being the largest residential building owner in Finland, and most of these other companies, they have stated that, okay, if we do this together, if we invest in this uh, capability to actually open up the data for all our benefits, we can actually start creating something that will change the whole industry and the way we build things. Okay, let's get finally to the APIs and, and how we are doing this. One of the key technologies we use is, is the life engine behind this. It's a uh, technology that creates digital identities not just for people or, or groups, but basically any real-world thing. Meaning assets, products, groups, projects, uh, whatever you have, devices, uh, buildings, and allows you to also describe how they are linked. So we can tell the machine using a JSON-LD semantics, ontologies, that okay, this is indeed a building, I'm a Finnish male, and I'm the owner of this building. Or apartment. And once we have sensors connected to the room, instantly we have a real-world connection uh, context for any data that we provide. And it, as I have an identity in the network, everything becomes personalized as well. And based on the My Data Open API per principles, you are indeed in control as a building owner or as an individual of all the digital identities you have in that world. And that creates the interoperability and the harmonization for data, but also for these platforms who can then decide how they are going to serve this as an industry-wide solution for their users, developers, and data providers. And that's what we are doing with Platform of Trust. It's an open platform based on open API, open source principles, and uh, driven by the community to create the access to the digital twins, as the industry calls these identities, and allows different developers to build the multi-sided market. With one integration, you, if you have an API, you have data, you can introduce it to the platform, harmonize it to yourself, turn it into data products, and make it available for everybody else who are willing to accept the terms and conditions set by this community. And of course, uh, the business and pricing of the platform as well. Which means that as it is community driven, you can actually get it for peanuts. The whole idea is that we are building the basic backbone for everybody to start creating the actual value with the data and the applications. And this is what we are building now. It's open already for uh, first developers, Senati is creating the first buildings there to, as digital twins, and uh, developers like Granlund and Cosify are actually turning their first uh, APIs into data products, which in turn the maintenance companies, ISS, LT, all these core, and others are then thinking about how they can actually use it for preventive maintenance, 
creating better uh, services for flexible access, for example, and they do the innovation with the data, which is exactly what we want to see happening. And how it works is that we basically create the core ontology, the semantic meaning classification for the root classes. So we can differentiate the human from a building and an asset or a data set, but we can also make it possible for industries like, like a platform of trust and the real estate industry to start extending it the way that they want to have uh, the data standardized and working on their context. And that's exactly what we are doing. We are uh, looking at how the industry is building buildings, planning them, designing them, and what kind of standards and, and context they use for different buildings, rooms, and devices. And as you put them onto the platform, you can actually adhere to any standards with any data that you can bring in to the uh, platform. And that's also community driven. As we don't believe in building silos, we aim to promote full operability both sides. So it's definitely API first. Jarkko Moilainen will definitely preach about this a lot more later, but the idea is that uh, we just pre pre uh, produce the main components for you to decide whatever you want to do with it and try to introduce any new functionalities that are open for everyone then to capitalize and use as they wish. But the idea is that with the APIs and documentation and guides, you can start managing the identities, the digital twins, you can create them with machines, you can actually cure it for them, discover data connected to actual rooms or buildings, and start introducing your own data products there, as well as curing the actual data. With one integration, you can actually plug in any API you have, and with one integration in real-world context, you can start using it in your application. And this is what it means for you as a data provider. You don't have to change anything in your existing environment. Your data sources, the database structures, the protocols you have, the way you have implemented your existing API, in order to bring your data in these kind of marketplaces, you need to create a more tra small translator in between. And that makes it possible for you to decide how you want to productize the data you are offering and how you're you going to harmonize it so that in real world context, anybody is able to use it. Let's say you have energy consumption data reports for annual and monthly and, and uh, hourly consumption of this room, you can split it into three different data products. Say that any commercial venue in Finland, I have data about energy consumption. Here's my schema. All that is harmonized to the core JSON-LD ontology. So if somebody wants to get the kilowatts per hour from this room, they don't have to understand how you have implemented it in your own database, in your own schema. We are talking about the same standardized key values there. So that's how the, all the data gets harmonized. But at the same time, you can slap any price to that. You can set any legal restrictions, uh, access rights to your data products. For example, only uh, certain users, companies, or uh, users with, for example, strong authentication can get your data out of there. And that's how you decide the rules. That's how you actually build your own competitive edge and start addressing the market looking for data. And we are introducing the consent mechanisms also for you to decide how you're going to make it possible for somebody to actually uh, claim that they are able to access your data and how you can then set the rules on how you can release it without just uh, sticking to the platform capabilities itself. And this is what it's going to look like, your APIs. You can bring it into the data marketplace, define what kind of context you want it to be discovered by others, and basically set any kind of productization you want to have it there. Make it as act attractive as you want. Certain information can be completely free. Something ha can have a lot of price if it's 
uh, attractive to the uh, consumers and developers, and it's refined, only accessible through you, the market actually starts to emerge. But as a developer, it means that you can then, without understanding any of these and building multiple integrations, actually discover data using the real-world context, like Senati buildings. What kind of uh, CO2 or temperature data would you have, or accounting data, about the Senati offices? And if they say that you can get the Cosify and Granlund data products from here, you can just subscribe to those data products and start building something wonderful for your customers. That's how the data is actually turned into something somebody can use as a content. And then decide what to do with that. And if somebody is willing to pay for that or use it for you as an application or any solution, that's how the big change starts to happen. And with the My Data components, the strong authentication capabilities, the consent My Data wallet mechanisms, we can actually of course, adhere to GDPR and other regulation, but also make it possible for each of us as individual decide how the data is used and create full transparency, not just for individuals, but also for, for example, taxation or the financiers to actually see what's happening with those assets. And that's where the big business opportunities are as well. So as a data uh, application developer, you can then freely decide what you want to use in your applications and see all the technical details you need to put it into use. But one of the main things is that the data is not copied here. It's not a massive honeypot. And we definitely uh, don't believe in a model where somebody just duplicates the whole internet into a platform or copies it in your phone as the some of those DLT models seem to be at the first thought. Instead, it needs to be linked. Because if we link it, you control it, you, you can set all the SLAs you want, you can set the pricing, you take the responsibility, but it also means that the platform doesn't hinder your performance in the middle. And with the trust and privacy, it means that most of the data doesn't flow through the platform, so we can even support sensitive information from healthcare or, or for example, financing, so that the platform doesn't know what the data is that's been transmitted. And I think that's one of the major things we can do and are the core of the trust component in these kind of services. One of the biggest problems with the APIs has been that as the phenomenon has been going through the nation, every business has built their own API. The government has successfully built APIs. They're wonderful. They are there. But who's going to use them? Who's going to use uh, an application API, uh, an API that promises that I have energy data, for example, or uh, maintenance data, or public register data about the real estate. We still, most of it is used by few companies like insurance companies integrating the population register using the population data as well as the room and, and building data they have. And most of these public APIs, for example, are used by rating companies. We turn it into PDFs or some uh, rating, uh, 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 rating on, on a paper and the banks use it. So most of the potential is not utilized, even though the data is there. And it's due to those facts that we just discussed. And the thing is that if we can change this, as we have seen now already, that anybody that complies to your uh, terms on the data can then freely decide how, what kind of solutions they want to build. And once you start introducing different kind of data sets, like from uh, square meters to kilowatts per hours to actual euros and utility rates of this room, for example, you can actually start creating something that creates a lot of value for the owner, but also for the tenants or anybody in the uh, processes and, and service flows. And that's what they're already realizing. The maintenance companies can actually create something meaningful for the owners and tenants if they get a hold of 
onto the maintenance data that's been accumulating behind those APIs. And we have already seen that, that with the help of Platform of Trust, this is already happening. So now we have seen how we make the data flow, how we can productize it, how we can harmonize it, but the key thing is that how can you introduce the trust element in it. It's a bit uh, tricky, but it's definitely doable, and I think that the Nordics, and especially Finland, is something that is definitely leading this, because if you look at the world, transparency, ethical use of data, uh, the interconnectivity of it, and the sustainable use of it is not something that the GAFA companies want at the moment. If you think about the Europe, third option to build an infrastructure where we can actually decide what we want to do with these different services, how we, who's going to use our data, we need to take a completely different kind of approach to the whole thing. And luckily for us in Finland, there's been a long-term development in this area. And thanks to the movement with the APIs and open data and all these, the whole at attitude, even from the public sector and government, has been completely turned over towards how we handle the data and how we build the capabilities for the citizens to use it. And my data is, of course, one of these leading uh, things. The My Data Global has been just uh, established, and there's a lot of development happening around the digital identities for each person, which is definitely the building block for everything. How we digitalize mandates and rights. I am actually an owner of this apartment or a tenant here, or a, I have a lease agreement on this. How can the machines understand that? Using the CSDs or any other financial uh, registers, can you actually prove that as a bank you have a pledge, first pledge on this apartment, preventing anybody from se uh, actually selling it? If you can automate these bits and connect it with data, you can actually build quite a interesting services. And also with the consent of that kind of a right holder, we can actually make the data accessible based on legislation and other criteria so that we can actually start building personalized services. There's a lot on the screen, I know, but these are actually the key building blocks that we need to have. As we want to build everything around you, even Facebook wants to do that. The incentives they have might be a bit different than what we uh, have in mind in, here in Finland, but the idea is that you actually need to be in charge of the services and the data that are provided by different platform operators like Platform of Trust here with the real world context. But if you cannot make the users, the individuals themselves, trusted enough, not just uh, on the highest level of uh, security, but also on a level that is enough to personalize the data, forget the passwords, and open up all the services that actually, with the pseudonym access alone, understand that you were the same anonymous guy who visited our service yesterday, or with different enrollment mechanisms we have been building with Sisu ID, for example, on this as an open source, open community solution, using your password and the uh, passport or any governmental provided document, you can actually read the chip on the NFC, take your facial image and enroll as a strongly uh, authenticated user without any transaction fees and with one euro cost for the whole community for enrollment. If you can introduce this kind of capability to start rolling any foreign citizens into Finnish services, you actually start creating a massive change in how we, we can authenticate, for example, the, the labor force coming to build the buildings or uh, serv service these, or for example, the investors that are investing in, in the Finnish companies or Finnish real estate. The same goes with the companies. That's why Tilaavastu has been a great uh, lead in this case, because they are the ones actually creating the transparency and the open society for us all. And if they can authenticate that this company also is uh, acting on a legal basis and doing it, bearing its responsibilities, and we combine these two, we actually know who's behind the company, who the company is, and if those trusted users 
can then use the digital consents, like I'm the owner of this building, or I'm based on Rafi, I can actually drive this car, we can actually start releasing the data from these platforms. And as you, as a data provider with your API or developer, decide your own terms and rules for the data release, you can then lean on these capabilities to actually make it possible for others to use it without you bearing all the liabilities. And with these capabilities, we can actually see a big change in the data economy and the way you can actually exploit the data coming from the APIs, but make it available so that you actually have something in it for you as well and the control over the usage of the data you are providing. And this starts to break the silos. It's not about you just building your own interfaces on the APIs. You can actually start driving your business with data, but also making your data create a lot of more business for you. So that's about that. We are really happy to get you involved in this uh, development. It's open for everyone. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on, uh, a big community growing, and it's most of it is just free to use. Just start connecting with the sandbox, become a developer, start putting your buildings or any digital twins there, and start thinking about what you can actually do with your APIs and data. And we would be really happy to, to help you get on board it and start doing this together. So, thanks a lot for no. having me here.